Okay, uh, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. So for today, I will be presenting this uh, paper, which is based on Transformer, by the title, uh, New Course to Find 3D Physical Construction Method Based on 3D MM Flame and Transformer. Uh, so which the- pen? Hmm? Which pen? It's, it was published in like ACN reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ACN. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so this paper has like uh, three main contributions. So the first contribution of this paper is they explored the utilization of the uh, dual vision transformer network for 3D physical construction. In that they achieve a very competitive result uh, with previous CMM state of what works. The second contribution they have is they introduce a novel method or a model that synthesize the intricate texture by combining 3D MM texture and a texture directly driven from the input image and they try to project it into the UV space. This method in provide or improve the UV uh, mapping for the final 3D uh, face construction. So uh, the final contribution would be the outcomes of the method, uh, the shape and the texture reconstruction uh, demonstrate a very competitive with the state of art solutions. So uh, first, uh, let's see how they use the 3D MM Flame 2020. So uh, the 3D MM Flame 2020 uh, method, uh, it characterized the shape of the 3D faces into three spaces. So the first space is the shape, the second space is the expressions, and the last space is the pose head space. So for the shape, uh, it uh, contains information that uh, distinguish individuals uh, from one another. And the additional space is expression. This space allows uh, recognition of various emotions within the same individual. So if the same individual have different kinds of expression, we need some information to map those vertices or displacements in the space. So usually this is how they do it in previous state of art works. So given the input image, they try to use CNA basically resin F15 to extract features such as identity, expression, and pose. So they feed this uh, uh, features, which is extracted by CNN to the 3D MAM. 3D MAM can be flame or uh, can be basal model. They have a different kind of 3D MAM model, but for this specific paper, they use the flame, which is uh, proposed in 2020. And based on that, they try to render the face texture and project it uh, the, into the 2D space. And they try to use different kinds of self-supervision loss function to uh, calculate the loss. So let's look at the proposed method for this paper. So for this paper, they try to follow like uh, three different uh, effective uh, steps. So the first step is they regress the 3D main flame parameters. Uh, so we can see here using dual uh, vision transformer, which is tiny because they try to reduce the number of parameters and they try to extract a different kind of parameter for 3D MM, including uh, camera and lightning that, that, that will be used when we render back to the 3D, to the, to the space. Uh, so the, the second thing they, the second step they use is they try to refine the UV map. Uh, and the last thing they use is they try to uh, refine the 3D MM shape using uh, upscaling 3D mesh using DECA, which is a detail expression capture and animation. So let's look like the general process uh, and we can explore more later. So after they try to get the 3D MM uh, uh, parameters, they try to feed it to the 3D MM flame. So the 3D MM flame would produce two kinds of uh, coarse output. The first one is the coarse UV. The second one is the coarse 3D mesh. So after getting the coarse UV, they try to uh, improve the, the texture information using the UV mapping, which is directly uh, mapped to the, to the image into the UV space. So they try to concatenate the Bose uh, texture that is output from the 3D MIM and that is output from the, directly from the image. And they try to use the tiny, uh, uh, like dual vision transformer tiny as encoder, then they try to use CNN as a decoder and they try to find it. Uh, finally, they have the, this fine UV output. For the shape, they use uh, DECA, which is proposed in 2029, given the number of uh, certain vertices. They try to upsample using a uh, tree train model and they concatenate both the fine UV and the fine 3D mesh by using this pre trained uh, model. 
then they uh, finally they have the fine three D mesh with uh, realistic texture. This is the overall framework. Now let's look at uh, a closer look, a closer look at how they reconstruct using the coarse reconstruction block. So as I said before, from the input image, they use tiny uh, uh, vision transformer. They output some parameter. Usually the parameters are the expressions, the the shape, and they also have we have the pose, and we have also this uh, thigh, which is the texture. And also for for rendering, we need to know the lightning and the camera parameters as well. So this dual uh, vision transformer output this uh, parameters, and this is feed into the three D MM. Like this four parameters will be feed into three D MM model, which outputs the two coarse shape, uh, coarse uh, texture and coarse shape. And using uh, some kind of uh, rendering technique, they render. The, the image and they try to project it into 2D uh, by calculating the loss function from the original image and the reconstructed uh, 2D rendered image. Uh, so they utilize uh, dual vision transform later for 3D parameters regression model. So they also have a comprehensive parameter regression. So they in total, they try to regress uh, 236 parameters for effective 3D first reconstruction. So, in 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 total, using uh, dual tiny uh, vision transformer, they try to output this number of parameters, and they try to use it for rendering process. So for course uh, construction block, uh, they use four loss function. Uh, in terms of loss function, they don't really use a new loss function. It's just like pre existing state of art loss function, which is which is like usually very useful when we do uh, face rendering, which is landmark loss. Landmark loss uh, contains, uh, emphasize key facial areas using weighted landmarks. So uh, when they do landmark loss, they try to use uh, 80, uh, uh, 68 uh, points, and they, they try to calculate the, 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 the point between the input image and the rendered input image they try to compare. Uh, second, they use skin uh, photometric loss, Basically, uh, this uh, loss compares the skin color similarity between the input and the render image. Uh, also, identity loss, they try to use the deep feature extractor to extract uh, features from the input image and the render image. And based on the loss, they try to calculate uh, into back propagation. Uh, finally, normalized loss to prevent some kind of irregularity when reconstruction. Uh, they has to normalize uh, all the key parameters. Uh, now, uh, if we go into how to, how they refine shape uh, reconstruction block, uh, first we see the adoption of uh, DECA, uh, which is detailed construction block. Uh, they utilize DECA uh, entire detailed construction block for refined shape reconstruction without any kind of modification. The, they just uh, pre-train, they just input or load the pre-trained model and they upsample uh, the vertices. So mesh up upscaling and displacement, upscaling the 3D mesh from the flame to increase mesh density, followed by the displacement operation for each uh, vertices along its uh, normal direction. So this DCA, what it does is it try to take a certain number of uh, vertices from the uh, 3D main flame and given the 3D main flame uh, mesh density, it, it will try to increase its density uh, and also uh, do some kind of uh, displacement operation uh, on each vertices uh, as a final output. Uh, so utilization of pre-trained DCA model, as I said, they leverage the, 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 DC, uh, the DECA pre-trained model for fine shape reconstruction, eliminating the need for additional training. So the, the main contribution of their paper is uh, having an uh, interesting idea for texture refinement rather than shape refinement, because for the shape refinement, they already use the pre trained model. So for the texture refinement, uh, they introduce a fine texture reconstruction block following the 3D mesh reconstruction, focusing on refining texture to capture uh, some intricate facial detail. Uh, so they both combine the coarse texture that is output from the 3D MMUV and the directly projected uh, texture from the input image. 
So they have two kinds of text information. First one, which is uh, which is obtained from the CDMA uh, UV. The second one is uh, they uh, directly project the UV map from the input image. So they concatenate both of the information and feed it to the dual tiny transformer. And they, as a decoder, they use uh, before decoder the app sample and use uh, convolution as a decoder. Uh, then they finally have uh, the fine UV texture uh, and feed it to the uh, final uh, rendering step uh, as a final uh, mesh, including texture. Uh, so for this one, decoder and encoder network for texture employs an, uh, an encoder decoder network uh, to concatenate UV texture and generate refined texture that combines the 3D and main texture information uh, for detailed projection. Uh, so one thing you get like one thing we can note from this uh, uh, from this part is they also use a UV skin segmentation. The reason they use this skin segmentation is uh, is this can be used as a guide to uh, to to inform the fine UV texture uh, mapping uh, so that it will keep its uh, key facial feature. So using this segmentation, it's it's very useful to have guide. Because once we project this uh, UV map into the space, it might lose its uh, its uh, shape of uh, facial feature. So in order to prevent that, they use like the, this skin segmentation to keep the most facial feature of uh, of the UV map they have. So for the loss uh, for the let's look loss function for texture uh, for loss function, they use a skin loss. It focuses on ensuring. Uh, fine texture and skin region that aligns the direct projection from input image. So it's just the L1 difference between the UV input and the UV fine, and they try to compare because this UV input, it contains local information and the UV fine contains both local and global information. So they try to have a difference between the local and the global and local uh, fine details. There. So they try to use this skin loss. As a as a as a loss function. Finally, uh, secondly, they use the three three D MM texture loss, which aims to uh, find texture in the non skin region to resemble a three D texture while harmonizing color. Basically, this loss is useful because uh, using uh, the uh, UV input, it might have some kind of occlusion. So in in the area where there is occlusion, they try to uh, they try to use the, the skin texture that is getting from the 3D MA model because uh, you need to somehow have information to map the texture into the occluded region, but the UV input doesn't have that kind of information. So in the occluded area, this function will punish the model to use the 3D MA uh, texture mapping method. So the, the third loss function is the skin boundary loss. It just smooths the skin boundary by minimizing the derivatives in this like sharp corner area. Uh, lastly, uh, for symmetrical loss, they ensure uh, UV texture uh, prevent image separation for occluded region as well. So uh, finally, for the training, they employ like uh, 480k image from the balanced data set, and they use fan for detecting the landmark loss or uh, 68 landmarks. And VGG phase two model because when they do uh, when they do the loss function uh, using deep feature, so this is VGG phase two. Uh, VGG phase two is a deep feature extractor that extract uh, features from a given image and the rendered image so that they can calculate the loss. Uh, so for the skin segmentation and the initial training. Uh, they use focus for uh, skin segmentation, and they try to use uh, supervised training using uh, Sandab A image. Sandab A image is the main uh, data set when we come to the face reconstruction uh, task because it contains a lot of diverse faces with a lot of occluded uh, part as well. So uh, loss function weight, uh, focus on the skin for shape texture was just a weight for lightning and texture training. Uh, training and performance, uh, train to uh, network with Adam, and they achieve zero point uh, seconds per image uh, across traction time. 
so this is qualitative uh, result uh, for face or fiber. As you can see here, this is the, the image or this is the shape they have from the coarse shape. As so we can see here, there is no detail or there is no realism in this uh, rendering or in this output because it's just uh, put some kind of uh, coarse shape. There is no detail in it. But using their fine uh, reconstruction block, they added some kind of detail. As you can see here, when someone smiles, like it forms lines and we can capture using this uh, fine shape uh, block method. Uh, so this is also their qualitative result using uh, their own uh, fine texture. As you can see here, using only the 3D, 3D MM texture, uh, it's more like smooth throughout the faces. There is no uh, intricate uh, change in terms of texture. So one of the limitation of 3D MM texture is just, it puts like uh, the same throughout all the faces, but using, because it's like more like uh, global information. It doesn't contain local information or local mapping. But when they use this directly projected texture, which is getting from the input image, we see here, it contains local information of how the faces look like and different kinds of uh, colors and, and texture as well. So that's why they try to combine both the 3D and the texture, which contains global information and the uh, directly projected texture, which contains uh, local information. And uh, the final merging output is look like this thing, uh, the, the, the last row. Uh, so you can see it, it contains pretty realistic faces comparing to the only the 3D MM uh, mode. So this is qualitative result in overall reconstruction. They compare with the DECA and FOCUS, which are the previous state of art works in terms of face reconstruction. Uh, this is their uh, fine texture. As we can see here in the previous model, uh, most of the faces textures are more like smooth, more like animation, animated uh, faces, but here, even though it's not uh, practically correct, it contains uh, somehow wrinkles and pores on the faces uh, to make it more like uh, real realistic uh, comparing to other models. So qu quantitative results. Uh, one thing to mention, one thing we can see here uh, is this is their model and it doesn't uh, beat or outperform uh, like state of art, for example, focus and albedo gun or mica, because because of this model only focuses on the uh, on the shape reconstruction rather than just only texture. So uh, regarding texture, their model performed well, but regarding like shape, this model have very advanced way of uh, refining the shape. So it's very difficult for this model to beat uh, this state of art works. But as, as you can see here, the, the, the result they have when they uh, calculate the reconstruction error is a bit more competitive uh, than the advanced uh, state of art like works using uh, different kinds of method for further process the phase shape. And one thing we can he uh, we can see from the, the table two is they also have co comparison between uh, the backbone of ResNet 15 and the dual vision transformer. Uh, the, the number of parameters is more likely uh, comparative, 26 and 28, uh, even though the dual vision transform is a little bit uh, slow, which is 22, this is like 16, it's a little bit slow. But uh, when we see the, re the reconstruction error, the median and the mean and the standard deviation, we can see here the lower the better. So it, it outperforms the like the vanilla ResNet 15, which uses like CNA method. And this is this is this is the main contribution of this paper as well. So limitation, uh, limitation with uh, ex extensive occlusion. Uh, current reconstruction struggles with the scene that involves like uh, a lot of occlusions and uh, suggesting the need for more diverse data set in the in the significant occlusion. So the reason is that when the training we don't have uh, this occluded image. So in the tasting it might. Uh, the model might get uh, very uh, uh, struggle to to predict those occluded area because there is no there is no training data set on the image uh, during the training process. Uh, the other is like enhancement of the fine shape reconstruction. So for for the shape, they already use the the ECA framework, which 
which is the pre-trade model. So in the future, they, 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 they are trying to use the custom block using the dual vision transformer for improving the fine shape reconstruction. And finally, the broader model or network evaluation. Uh, so they also recommend exploring different 3D MA model. So as I said before, we have like a lot of 3D MA model, basal model, flame model, a flame model, and we also have a deep face model. So using different models and different VIT uh, network, maybe uh, they are trying to improve the performance and the realism of the 3D face construction. So this is the end of our presentation. If you have any questions. So this is using the uh, VIT for yeah. texture improvement? Okay. Yes, yes. So, so for the VIT, they produce the 3D, the 3D MM parameters. So, so the 3D MM flame can also output the coarse UV map as well and uh, the coarse 3D mesh. So yes, the 3D model outputs both the texture and uh, the shape. But for the texture, they say it's not enough to use only this uh, 3D model as I, as, I showed, as I showed before. It's just like uh, smooth throughout all the faces. So they're trying to say, this doesn't contain uh, local information. It just contain a global information because it has to contain also uh, the occluded area. For the occluded area, they use information, so it just smooths out relative to the uh, vertices. So, uh, uh, do you know how many? What is the dimension of the? Uh, so uh, they don't like specifically uh, output or explicitly say the number of the dimension, but uh, similar papers outputs uh, for for this one, I think usually uh, two. 500 by two dimension. Two 500. Yeah. 500 by two dimension. 500. Yeah, yeah, for the, for the course. Uh, so how about the fine UV? Yeah, the, the fine UV, I don't have information because the, uh, there's no code available for this thing. So there's no explicit way to check like what's the dimension. Okay. Then do you know how many vertices in so so right. for the for the fine uh, for this paper they don't explicitly say that but for different paper that uses like uh, vision transformer they app sample uh, the vertices into three stage the first ones are like what, 250 uh, 1000 and like, 2000 vertices so the, the 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 fine detail texture can have 2000 by 2 dimensions for the UV map But as I know, uh, some of the 3D MM, they have like 35,000 vertices. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, in VIT or just transformer, you cannot easily use more than 500 points. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so but I don't know, like, about, I don't know about 3D MM, like that many vertices, but. Uh, for other paper as well, they mainly for the coarse 3D mesh, they mainly produce like until 500 vertices. Right. Yeah, they don't. But, but I mean that kind of number mm -hmm. uh, is, I mean, bounding some number of vertices they can deal with. Yeah, and it is related to the resolution of the texture. Maybe. Yeah. So I mean, to prop maybe, I'm not sure how they uh, do it, but maybe they are kind of hiding this kind of information, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 In normal transformer, you are increasing the query number, the input size itself is largely here. Right? Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, to for high resolution of texture, yeah. they require more you see, input numbers. Yeah. So, I mean, they have to tackle this kind of um, challenge, yeah. but never say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they say never produce yeah. that. They, they, they are not doing that. Okay. Yeah. And solving that is, I think, important in this country. Yeah, yeah. I think most of the, 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 the problem comes from 
they don't have a realistic way to mark the texture of all the faces, even though they have good like, shape construction in it. So the construction is very tricky because they are very tricky and then they are well parameter. Yeah. And so they can reduce the number of the parameters yeah. using PC. Yeah. But after anyway we construct the vertices, they have to get RGB for each vertex yes. to get the high resolution of texture. Yeah. yeah. But I mean data file will be is not that's fine, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah there's no code, right? Yeah, there's no code for this yeah. paper. So th there's no way to check, like, uh, how many. Did you see published in this year, last year? Yeah, 2022. 22. Yeah. Uh, maybe you have to search for more recent and the paper that have been published. Okay. Yeah. I, I like uh, the 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 all the paper I read like using transformer. They don't have the code because most of them are journals and they don't provide any kind of compiled code. If it were like why not publish the uh, I don't know. I I could not find a good like conference paper like that where to search it and there's no like ICC or CDPR papers using transformers. But I mean. But is there some paper that doing that kind of thing, the high resolution vector construction uh, using CNN? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they really they it recently? It. Uh, I'm not sure, but I couldn't like read it all in because I was focusing on this. But uh, for the same then, then such for the recent conference papers uh, that does that kind of high resolution vector synthesis. Yeah. Maybe even using other techniques other than the transformer, yeah. we have to see that in the maybe we we I, I mean maybe that's why that that problem hinders using the transformer for the mm -hmm. But anyways, uh we recite papers that deals with the high resolution of texture synthesis. Okay. okay. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> you have to, yeah.